All right, this is going to be a continuation of the last uh, bit. I'm, I didn't quite do it in 10 minutes, but I think I'm going to be able to finish it in another three or four. So just a quick review of caves and sinkholes. You've got the rain which is falling down, which is the water. Some of that rain mixes naturally with carbon dioxide that's in the air, creating carbonic acid. Now here you've got the, the ground, right? And you've got maybe a bit of uh, limestone that's somewhere inside the ground. So the rain comes down, it soaks into the ground, it gets into this limestone, and over time, again, this is over many, many years, hundreds, thousands, in some cases, millions of years, it causes the limestone to dissolve. Now, when that limestone dissolves, basically, there's a space under there, which is a cave, right? Now, what happens is sometimes if the land up here is thin enough, if there's not enough space and the cave gets too big, then the land falls in fills up to fill up the space underneath there, and you get a sinkhole. Now, sinkholes can be small. They can be big. There have been sinkholes that have swallowed entire buildings because the, the cave was so large and ended up swallowing so much dirt and land that it caused a very huge hole. So that's caves and sinkholes. Um, how does an ocean vary with depth? Well, this is important because the the way that the ocean varies also depend also uh, has a, uh, an effect on the ocean currents and things like that. Basically, as you get deeper, then a couple of things are going to happen. As you get deeper, it should make sense that you're going to get less light. There's more stuff above filtering out the light, so it gets darker. Okay, as you get as you go down, the temperature gets colder. Right? It's getting farther away from the sun, and so it should be getting colder. And the last thing is the pressure is increasing, right? Which should make sense because as you get deeper, there's more and more water on top of you. Therefore, there should be more pressure. And those are the three important things that you should know about how things change inside the ocean. As that happens, you'll get things to, the, the water will flow in different ways, and that's where a lot of the currents come from. Okay, now we're going to step into climate and weather. Okay, just a really quick summary of the Earth's atmosphere. It's important to know that most of it is nitrogen. You got a little bit of oxygen there, and then the rest of it is very small amounts of anything. Now, this is dry air. It should be noted that in places that are very cold and dry, you might have about 0.02%, which means that it's still more than anything except for carbon dioxide, argon, oxygen, and nitrogen. In places where it's warm and humid, the air could hold up to 4% water, which means that it's more than anything except for nitrogen and oxygen. Okay, and so generally speaking, we say nitrogen, oxygen, and water vapor are the most uh, common things in the air. All right, now here we've got the different layers of the atmosphere. As we start in the troposphere, it's very, very low. It, uh, as you go up, the temperature is going to decrease. It's going to cool off. You're getting higher, right? Obviously, when you climb a mountain, it gets colder and colder. Now, as you go up that the stratosphere, it will still continue to get colder until you reach the ozone. And when you reach the ozone, that's when it's going to start getting warmer because the ozone filters out some of those ultraviolet rays, right? And if the ultraviolet rays can't get through, then that means down below is going to be cooler, up above is going to be warmer. Okay, so we get to a point where it gets back to about zero degrees Celsius, where we're up there near the stratosphere mesosphere. Now, as you're in the mesosphere, up here in the mesosphere, it gets colder and colder and colder, okay, up to about negative 90 degrees Celsius. And then all of a sudden, once you get out of the mesosphere, which actually there's a lot of filtration that goes on there as well, once you get out of the mesosphere, you get into the thermosphere. And the thermosphere jumps really fast from being uh, rather cool at negative 90 to be all this almost immediately 1,000 degrees Celsius. It very rapidly increases in temperature because there's not hardly any filtration out there at all. And so all of the sun's light gets there. A lot of energy is being put in there. And so it gets very, very hot. Now, it's important to know as well that as you go up, the pressure is going to decrease. There's less air on top of you. Therefore, there's less air pressure. Okay, and that's something important to know and, and understand. Now, I want to talk just a minute about day and night and the seasons. Day and night should be fairly obvious. The Earth is spinning around on its axis, and as it's spinning, you take turns being in the light and being in the dark, right? Now, why does, why does summer happen? Well, summer happens 
a big part of it is because of the direct rays or indirect rays of the sun. You should be able to see that how when when you're in the summer, let's say the northern hemisphere is in the summer right here, right, because the northern hemisphere is tilted towards the sun, then it is getting almost direct rays from the sun. The people up here at the top are still getting rather indirect rays. Down at the bottom, they're getting indirect rays as well. You can see in this picture right here, the direct rays will give you more energy than if it's slanted. Okay, you can kind of picture if you have a flashlight and you point a flashlight straight at the ground, it'll give you a circle, right? All of the light will be condensed in that circle. If you point the flashlight at an angle, then the rays are more indirect. You'll get a wider circle, right? Kind of like what you're seeing up here. A wider circle, which means that the light is being distributed more over an area. And so that means there's going to be less heat there. Okay, when you come over to here to the the uh, winter time, basically is what's happening, is now the northern hemisphere is pointed away, and so now the northern hemisphere is getting indirect rays, and the southern hemisphere is getting the direct rays, which means they are now going to have summer. Okay, and that's basically the idea of the seasons. Okay, now we're going to talk about winds. You've got a couple of different things. You've got local winds, which are small which are winds in a small area. These are very often land breezes and sea breezes. This is a sea breeze, which happens in the morning. The land warms up faster than the, than the water does, so the air here will rise because it's warm. Therefore, there's a low pressure area here. The cold air from the water will then flow in and fill the low pressure area. Okay, the opposite happens at night. The land cools off faster than the than the 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 water does and so the air above the water since it's warmer will go up that creates low pressure the cold air from the land flows down back into the ocean that's basically what's happening those are local winds small things now a monsoon is basically a local wind a sea breeze or a land breeze that's much larger in in its effect okay so it's, a monsoon is actually more of a global uh, wind. Another type of global wind are these convection cells. Convection cells are generally occur because here at the e equator you've got a lot of heat, which means the air is going to go up, it's going to cool down and come back down, right? That happens on both sides. Uh, you can also have convection cells over deserts. There's a lot of desert here in the uh, mid midwestern, western United States. Therefore, in that, those areas, the air is going to rise and then it's going to come back around, cool off, and go back. Okay, so these convection cells are just areas that can change from time to time, but generally speaking, the, the air moves. Uh, you've got jet streams as well that, uh, that are very high that are caused by different pressures in the atmosphere. Okay, and so that's generally streams that are moving like these westerlies and these trade winds, things like that. All right. Um, I want to go on to, lastly, the different types of fronts. We've got four different types of fronts that we're looking at. We've got a cold front, which is when a cold front runs into a warm front. Okay. Now, in a cold front, that's where you get uh, your big storm clouds, right? Because the warm air is very quickly being pushed up because of the cold front. Cold travels faster than the warm, and so it pushes those warm up, that warm air up, that warm, moist air gets pushed up into the cold air. It condenses on the solid particles and creates those storms. Since it's moving fast, there's a lot going on there. That's where you get the storms with high winds, lots of rain. A warm front is where you actually have a warm air mass that's running into a cold one. This is a little bit less often and it doesn't have as much of an effect because you will get some clouds and, and things, but generally this will be a little bit more clear because the warm is going to be, uh, the warm is going to stay down and the cold's going to hold it. Okay, at a stationary front, you've got a warm front and a cold front that are meeting, but they're not moving. Now, you're still going to get some warm air that's now going to cause some condensation, so you are going to get some rain, but this is generally going to be uh, a steady rain over several days because it's not moving. The cold front is moving very quickly, and so that's going to be a very fierce uh, storm over a very short period. A stationary front could last several days. An occluded front is where you have two cold. Now remember the cold moves faster than the warm. So you've got two cold fronts and then you've got a warm front mixed in the middle. Okay. Now in that you will generally get some rain but again the cold's moving faster and so that warm is going to spread out r rather quickly and it's, it'll uh, that 
it'll just get a little bit of scattered rain for that. Okay, and that's it for, for weather, climate, and earth science. Good luck.